The following kinds of fashions are examples that are not recommended to wear when you visit a shrine. This was something that surprised me too when I was doing the research to make this video. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. One of the things that you absolutely want to do in Japan is to visit the beautiful Shinto shrines that have hundreds of years of history, right? However, I've received some messages about visiting shrines that they are a little bit concerned about the rules there because it is a place that's related to Japanese religions. So today, I will explain the five taboos related to visiting Shinto shrines in Japan. The taboos will get more and more important and the most important message will be presented to you at the end. So I hope you can fully enjoy this video. And before I start, I want to make it very clear that the purpose of this video is to reassure my fellow viewers who are a bit worried about possibly being rude so that they can fully enjoy their trip in Japan. It's really not about the best of the worst and the best of kind of thing. Please understand that many Japanese people make mistakes too, and that each shrine is deeply connected to the local community it belongs to, so detailed rules and manners are not always the same. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese cultural culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese literature culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's First of all, let me briefly explain to you what a Shinto shrine is in the first place. To make a long story short, Shinto shrines are special places that are meant for people to worship the gods. It was originally a place for people to come and remember their gratitude and humbleness, and it also functioned as a place for the locals to communicate with each other. This is a map of the precincts of a typical shrine. At the shrine's entrance, you will find the Tori Gate, which is meant to function as a barrier separating the outside world from the sacred shrine. There will be the Komainu garden gods on both sides of the gate. You walk through the Sando to head towards the front and main shrine, but you'll have to wash your hands and rinse your mouth at the Chozya before you move further in. As you move forward, you will finally reach the Haiden front shrine, where you will do your prayers or give your greetings to the gods. However, as you can see from this picture, there's another shrine behind the one in the front. That one is called the Hongden main shrine, where the enshrined item where the gods are believed to reside are placed. It is considered to be the most important place in the whole area. Unless you are the priest pretest of the shrine, or if it's a very special occasion like receiving the prayers of a wedding, self-delivery, etc., you will only pray at the Haiden front shrine. However, please keep in mind that there are about 80,000 shrines in Japan, more than the number of convenience stores like 7-Eleven and Family Mart that seem to exist on every block. So this is really just one example. There are shrines with thousands of gates, have different guardian animals protecting the entrance, and area sizes of each shrine are very different. The gods that are worshipped in shrines are not always the gods that show up in Kojiki, the ancient myths of Shintoism, but also the gods of local nature, and even famous people too, like Abe no Seimei and Oda Nobunaga. If you have any plans on visiting shrines in Japan, I recommend you to look up which god they worship and the precinct's map in advance to fully enjoy your visit. Then finally, let's start taking a look at the five taboos of visiting shrines. One. Wearing certain kinds of fashion. The first taboo is about the fashion we wear when we visit shrines, but it's actually something that hasn't been so strictly prohibited recently. However, I thought it'd still be better if you keep it somewhere in your mind, rather than not knowing about it at all, so I included it in the list. The following kinds of fashions are examples that are not recommended to wear when you visit a shrine. 1. Animal fashion. 2. Off shoulders. 3. Camisole or running shirts. 4. Short pants. 5. Sandals and high heels. These are just examples, and it doesn't mean that you won't be able to go inside if we wear these fashion. Please just imagine that the shrines are the homes of the gods, and it's almost like visiting someone's house for the first time. It would be best if you can take off any hats while you're at the shrines too. By the way, some shrines might require you to walk a long distance or climb mountains, so in that case, it's better to wear a comfortable fashion for exercise. 2. Passing the first gate without bowing. Walking the center of the Sando Road. Before you enter and after you exit the first Tori gate of the shrine, it's best that you bow. This is again because the Tori are thought of as the front door of the gods' homes, 
is a way to say your greetings before entering. Next, after passing through the Tori Gate, you'll be walking down the Sando, the road to the front and main shrine. However, when you walk this road, it's recommended that you walk on the side of the road and avoid walking the center. Both of these actions are of course for you to be more respectful to the gods. But I personally think it's actually more for us who are visiting the shrines. You are able to switch your feelings to understand that you are entering somewhere special, a place that is meant for us to reconsider our humbleness and gratitude towards life. So to be honest, there are tons of Japanese people who don't bow or walk in the center of the sando. But I personally think they are not having a full experience. 3. Not purifying yourself at the Chozia. After you enter the front gate and walk the road, you will find the Chozia where you purify your hands and mouth. This is meant to wash away any impurity before greeting the gods at the front shrine. But please think of it as the same as washing your hands and rinsing your mouth after you go to someone's house. It will surely be considered rude if you don't do so. However, as you may know, there's actually a proper procedure of doing it. So let's practice doing that together. 1. Scoop water and wash your left hand, then your right hand. 2. Put some water into your left hand and rinse your mouth with it. 3. Hold the scoop up to wash the handle with the leftover water. It might seem a bit tiresome, but it's actually the most efficient way to clean your hands and your mouth and to keep the scoop clean. I hope you can enjoy trying it out. And making some small mistakes is not a problem. Trying to do your best is already enough. After the COVID pandemic, to prevent infection, more and more shrines have eliminated the ladle from the chozia and use only running water. Use the water directly to cleanse your hands and mouth in such cases. 4. Taking pictures without praying. I'm very sure you've seen many beautiful pictures of shrines in Japan, and you might be willing to take some yourself. However, always remember that it's not polite to go to shrines, to just take photos without giving your prayers at the Haiden front shrines. Pressing your hands together at the shrines are thought of as your greetings towards the gods, and it doesn't always mean that you are worshipping them. You don't want someone coming into your house, taking pictures, and leaving without saying a single word to you, right? Just like how we wash our hands and mouth, there are some simple procedures for the prayers too. So let's practice this together. 1. Put money into the offering box. 2. Ring the bell. 3. Bow deeply twice. 4. Clap at chest height twice with your right hand back. 5. Bow deeply once. It's really up to you how much money you put in the offering box, but even just a 5 yen coin would be enough. By the way, please be sure that you do this at a shrine, because at Buddhist temples, you do not clap, but simply put your hands together and bow. 5. Asking for a wish to come true. This was something that surprised me too when I was doing the research to make this video. I think a lot of Japanese people, when they do their prayers at the shrine, try to ask the gods for their wishes to come true. However, many books about Shinto and the websites of shrines pointed out that this is not the right attitude you should have when you visit shrines. Again, shrines are supposed to be places where we remember our humbleness and gratitude. Asking for something to just miraculously happen is far away from this, and you're just being lazy. So although at shrines you do write your wishes and dreams on votive pictures for example, you should not be asking the gods to make it happen, but it needs to be a statement of your own determination. You're basically promising the gods that you will be achieving your goals, so that you'll be able to focus and concentrate more. Before I end this video, I want to tell you one more time that no one is forcing you to obey these rules because you have to act good for someone else. It's purely for you to have an occasion to understand how the shrines from ancient times functioned as a place for Japanese people to remember their humbleness and appreciation for their daily lives that we all tend to take for granted. So if you think any of the things that I introduced today is difficult to follow, it's not a problem at all. Having a heart of gratitude is what's most important. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I introduced the five taboos at a Japanese Shinto shrine. One, wearing certain kinds of fashion. The shrines are the homes of the gods, and it's almost like visiting someone's house for the first time. Two, passing the first gate without bowing and walking the center of the Sando road. Both of these actions are of course for you to be more respectful to the gods. 
Three, not purifying yourself at the Chosia. It is meant to wash away any impurity before greeting the gods at the front shrine. Four, taking pictures without praying. It's not polite to go to the shrines to just take pictures without giving your prayers at the front shrine. Five, asking for a wish to come true. Shrines are places where we are supposed to remember our humbleness and gratitude, so we need to rather state our determination for our goals. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you were able to learn anything new about the Shinto shrines in Japan, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And also, please check out all the other activities that I'm doing inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching the video, everyone. I am so, so sorry that I haven't been able to post as many videos as I used to. I really, really do want to, but it's only Harumi and I doing it together, just the two of us, my wife and I doing it. And especially after having Zen and on the tourism industry, um, tourism has been really been um, going really well in Kyoto now once the, once the uh, borders have been opened and I've been working in the tourism industry too as an interpreter. Some of you watching this video might have already come to my samurai experience to come and see me by the way, thank you so much, but I've been working on that as well. I've uh, worked about four or five days a week outside during interpreter and then doing video editing also for Lata Six Sensei which is the new channel that I have. Um, I've been doing that at from evening to nighttime basically and also trying to edit videos for this channel as well. So um, once uh, next year, probably once our, my second daughter, uh, Nagi starts going to kindergarten, we might have more time. I do seriously want to try to aim for 2 million subscribers at one point. So I will um, try to come back, come back to Let's Ask Shogo, do more videos, uh, put more power into this channel eventually. But for at least maybe for this year, maybe for a while, um, right now I think our schedule is going to be one video every two weeks and two shorts every week. So um, please forgive us. If we can make more videos, like for example, it's going to be a short video at one point we will try to post a video one video every week so you can i hope you can look forward to it and i'll definitely be making more of these educational videos too which uh, is useful for you when you travel to japan guys thank you so much and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye